Ideographic thinking is a set of instruments and techniques with many possibilities for application. In fact, it is much more than this. The instruments and techniques are practical and useful in different areas, but are not an end in themselves. They support a natural way of thinking, created precisely on the basis of how our brains evolve and functions in order to favor processes of analysis, the communication of ideas, collaboration, decision-making, and change. We will see a range of applications dedicated to the analysis of complex problems, be for its own sake or as a tool for facilitating a therapy, coaching, or counseling session. It is a matter of analyzing a situation or problem in a rich and structured way, having a maximum systemic approach, but also the possibility of going into more depth in a focused and strategic manner. As the term transformative in name of the technique implies, there is not only a focus on analysis, but the application of working modalities already directed towards resolution and which favor at the most a module and flexible type of thought, which is open to change and to a creative idea. Among the common factors on which ideographic thinking moves, we can list fluidity, naturalness, and efficacy of thought, characteristics which can be enhanced and sustained by the use of visual and graphic modalities, as you will see, they will be outlined in many ways and modalities. If this first description makes you think of mind maps, ideal graphics, systems, theories, icons, or symbols, etc., then we can say that this is the correct general idea, but we are talking about completely different and independent techniques from those just mentioned. We will move in similar areas where thinking and images overlap, but with different modalities and techniques structured to specific ends. It is about operative modalities, which we have projected considering the neurological basis of thinking, neuroplasticity, of learning and change in any case, if someone wants to go into more depth about these aspects, further on there will be a whole chapter dedicated to similarities, differences, and added value with respect to other techniques. Transformative visual thinking and all the other applications of ideographic thought are combined to be flexible instruments usable in different contexts. Graphics will always have a central role. The good news is that all the different techniques and modalities can be used by anyone, even if you think your writing is bad, that you cannot draw, or that you have no graphic skills. In fact, one of the key concepts of ideographic thinking is that with the right instruments, everything is easier. Knowing the tricks of the trade simplifies it even more. Hammering a nail in with your hands will always be difficult and painful, but if you use a stone, it will become much easier and the use of a hammer is fast and easy. If I have a chance to get practical advice from someone who has already faced the problem and found useful strategies to overcome it, then everything is simplified. In fact, if someone before me has already hit their fingers with a hammer and has learned how to get a better grip of it and who suggests I hold the nail with a clamp, then it makes it easier, more effective, and gratifying we will see that some types of pen or brush are adequate for transforming a shaky line into a beautiful line. But this is just one of the advantages of how we explain ideographic thinking. Another central aspect is that we need to change our perspective. It's one thing if it's an artistic picture, and another if it's a graphic expression or stylized picture, which is a functional communicative and thinking tool. But if you don't want to use pen and paper, there is computer software and there are tablet and smartphone apps, some of which are free to improve every line, which quickly recognize the shapes you have sketched and transform them into one with more regular outlines and allow you to write with a keyboard. Again, other apps allow you to drag ready-to-use shapes, arrows, symbols, and icons onto the document you are working on. It's really easy. You can find more details on such instruments in the related references 
in the textual note at the end of this video. In the following videos for this course and the other training modules, we will see a series of features, technical, material, and support suggestions recommended for the applications in different contexts, on their own, for consulting or therapeutic tools, in training groups, in educational contexts, or other areas. In this module, we will mainly use a graphic database, consisting of simple forms such as circles, squares, and arrows. In other modules, we will start using symbols, stylized images, and icons. In any case, we will give you some examples in this module on how to insert some of these factors in a simple way to potentially enrich the modalities. The different applications can be used to complement one another and integrated with other approaches and methods to increase the potential of the content, operative modalities, and the interactive exchange with our counterparts in other educational, training, or therapeutic fields. What is the specific endpoint and main objective of ideographic thinking in general and of transformative visual thinking in particular? We could define it as the aligning of visual representation and words, making them proceed together in such a way that they sustain and increase one another's potential. This is the natural modality and development of thought as it should be, but it is about a path which has frequently deviated from an extremely unbalanced education towards logical, verbal, and serial thought. Images, body movement, development of natural networks of our brain, sensory perception, interpersonal communication and thought are all factors which grow together and support one another mutually as always. Mental space and visual space move alongside one another. The bigger the space of visual representation, the more space there is for thinking. The more space there is, the more flexible thought can be, and we can move freely and agilely around ideas representations, evaluations, and decisions. This is the great advantage and is an important object of growth and well-being to pursue. In fact, a systemic and ample representation of reality, which also, instead of just being a static map, allows us to exit from lineal reductionist cause-effect connections. This is typical of serial communication and thinking based on dysfunctional emotions personal conflicts, and thinking which is blocked in its own rigidity. Another way of seeing limitation in serial thinking is that its implications and limits are used to our disadvantage in public and in sales tactics. These approaches tend to develop techniques which we call conversational funnels, persuasive tunnels, and other techniques which, as their name already implies, evoke the manipulation of one thought from limitless confines, bearing in mind that with ideographic thinking and its transformational techniques, we have the possibility of amplifying our thinking, activating flexible and modular modalities in it, thus stimulating creative ideation and the propensity towards positive change.